welcome to a special Old Thunder Brewing Showcase episode of... Brutal Battle. This is one we teased by having one of the Old Thunder beers on the last Beer Mail episode because this one is sponsored by Kyle Norman. We didn't even know about this brewery until I received these beers from Kyle Norman and I was like... Who is Old Thunder Brewing? And he said they are brand spanking new. And after doing research, they are brand spanking new. Like, definitely not a year old. At this point, when we're doing this, they are, what, uh, like four months old, basically? Like, not even six months old at this point. So, just know that when we're tasting these beers, um, I don't know if these are going to be good or not. I'm assuming they're at least decent if Kyle Norman gave them to us. Just know that since they're such a new brewery, they're probably still figuring some things out as far as their new equipment and everything. So what we have here, it's probably going to get better, is my guess. Plus some of the stuff that I read they have in the works to to do. So this should actually be a pretty interesting episode, even though there's not a ton of information. There's actually more than I thought there would be, which is a good thing, because I did actually find an article. So the big thing is, thank you very much, Kyle Norman for these beers, and let's learn about some Old Thunder. So before we get to the first beer, I just wanted to say they opened in December of 2020, and they're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, They are located in an old post office building, apparently. Yeah, that's cool. So they have, like, boroughs in Pittsburgh, basically, and they're in Blaunox. So they're in the space that was the old Blaunox post office. Hmm. So this is the first time I've heard of a brewery going into a post office building. Uh, I mean, I've heard all sorts of other things, but a post office building, pretty interesting. Now, the the people who started this brewery are Rob Dillman, Zach Gordon, and Josh Taylor. So let's get to the first beer then. This may be the one I'm most excited for, I think. Although the next, the the second one I'm pretty excited for. Rebecca's not excited for the second one. Is this your most exciting Mm -hmm. one? Okay. So the first one is their 340 Lager, and this is actually a Hellas Lager, which um, not a lot of people doing Hellas Lager, so good on you. This is 4.8% alcohol, and all the beers we're having here are in 16-ounce cans, as is the way most breweries are doing it. And you said this is one of their year-round beers. This is one of their staple beers. So when they first opened, I don't know if that's changed, but from what I found, when they first opened... Their staple beers were an IPA, which I don't remember which one it is, and this Hellas Lager. Okay. So, which if you ask me, it's rare that a brewery just opening has a lager as a staple beer. Yeah. Especially with, you know, the current climate beer-wise. Everybody wants the the hazy IPAs and whatnot. Oh, yeah. I guess I could have just handed that to you, right? There you go. Okay. So what is it looking like? What do we think? Does it look like... Oh, man. It is... That is very light. Very light. Color. Yellow. I mean, it's yellow, but it's a super pale yellow. Very carbonated. Very carbonated. Very clear. Mm-hmm. Love that clear beer. Um, it's got... Yeah, it's got a lot of head sitting on top of it because, you know, we always pour agitated because we're old and we don't need a whole lot of CO2 intake. Well, I'm speaking mainly for myself, but we are... About the same age, so yes. Very hay, honey. Oh, that nose is beautiful. I love that nose. Yeah. Hay, honey. Oh, that is so crisp. That is so mm-hmm. crisp and clean, clean on the nose. It's very light. And this is perfect because we just did a two-mile walk. So, like, this is the type of beer I want after a two-mile walk. Like, nice, light, refreshing, low ABV. Smells crisp and clean. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you hit it right with the hay. It's a little biscuity mm-hmm. on the nose yeah. too, like a little bready biscuity. Smells really good. A little bit of of a, like a faint lemon peel, I think, too, on the nose. But yeah, I mean, it just smells mm-hmm. like a really nice clean lager. And that's how it tastes too. It tastes exactly how Ooh. it smells. And I think I'm oh. definitely getting more of the bready characteristics in the taste than I did on the nose. But yeah, yeah. you really got oh, that, dude. This is great. This is a really good lager. This is a nice Hellas. Mm. There is more bitterness on the finish than I thought there'd be based off the nose. That's not a problem. No, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting it. But that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Very tasty. Like you were saying, definitely a lot more with that kind of biscuity breadiness. I'm tasting more of the lemon peel note to it 
than I was getting in the aroma. It definitely has more of a mouthfeel to it mm-hmm. than I was expecting from the nose, too. I thought it'd be a little more thin. Uh, it's more substantial. This yeah, is, it really cooked your mouth. Yeah, it does. This is an interesting lager because it's light and easy, but at the same time, it's it like really lets you know it's there because the viscosity is more than you were thinking it would be, and the flavors are relatively big. Honey, hay, all that. That's a beautiful lager. Mm-hmm. I really like this. I really like it, too. Mm. Kyle Very Norman, um, we'll take a case of this, Kyle yeah. Norman, if you're able to do that. We'll take a case of this one. That's a really good beer. That's a great start. I'm a fan. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, so a little bit more information about Old Thunder Brewing. So, like I like to do, I always like to read something from these breweries to kind of give people an idea of how is the brewery branding themselves, basically. Like, what are they they saying about themselves? So, What is they saying? What is they saying? Yes. (laughs) So... Um, there's a, there's a statement on the website in their about us section from Josh, Rob, and Zach. So I wanted to read that. And I will tell you, I have not read this yet. So I will react to it as everyone hears it. Old Thunder Brewing is the apex of experience, creativity, and passion. Brewer owned and brewer operated. We are dedicated to serving our diverse community while remaining loyal to the past, present, and future of beer. Pretty standard thus far. Located in, in the Blau Knox borough of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, our tap room will be a welcoming place where guests can enjoy beers and each other's company. We are building our vision of a brewery and a forum where ideas are shared and relationships are formed. Our production schedule will include the highest quality lagers and ales, along with strong beers and mixed fermentation recipes destined for wood maturation. Mm. That sounds good. We've spent years writing this story, and we're excited to include you in the next chapter. Okay. I think it's well written. Yeah. It also says what pretty much every brewery says is holding to the traditions of the past, but doing something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard. So, whatever. All right. So, uh, Rob Gordon and, or I'm sorry, Zach Gordon and Rob Dillman Work together at Brew Gentlemen. I know we had teased in another episode that, you know, Old Thunder was started from two people who had worked at Old uh, Brew Gentlemen before, which, by the way, you know, Brew Gentlemen is a big thing in Pittsburgh, actually, even outside of Pittsburgh. They're pretty known. I think a bunch of years ago, they were actually recognized by some magazine as like top 25 breweries in the U.S. to watch. Mm. So, yeah, so they, they're a big name. And we were there when we visited mm-hmm. last year, very early last year before COVID. And they were great, very good beers. I remember their Kolsch being exceptionally good too, but they had a lot of good hazy beers and all that good stuff. So Gordon and Dillman came from Brew Gentlemen, so there's good pedigree there as far as brewing goes. Uh, so where did the name Old Thunder come from, you may ask yourself. So apparently when they started working on their building – in the basement, they found this old sledgehammer, and they named it Old Thunder. And then they found an old crowbar there, and they named it Old Lightning. So it was just this thing they did, and then they decided, well, let's make this old sledgehammer the logo, which mm-hmm. it is. It's an old sledgehammer. And let's just name it Old Thunder. So that's where Old Thunder comes from. Okay. So pretty simple, but yeah. interesting enough. So let's move on. Next one. I'm very interested in this because it could be awesome. Okay. So this next beer is called Stillage. It is an English ale, and it is 4.8%. And I'm thinking that maybe this is an English ale in the sense of, like, a English mild style. That's what I'm hoping for, because I do like me some English milds. Let's get into it. I mean, obviously, it's just, it's going to be malty. Because English style's always malty. More malty than what U.S. likes to do, pretty much. Okay. Okay. Looking like reddish-brownish. Reddish, yep. Uh, A little bit hazy. Yeah, decent amount of head. Yeah. And the head's got a little bit of like a yellowish-brownish tinge to it. Smell? It smells malty. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of all I'm getting. <sighs> okay. There's a little bit, 
there's a little bit of a hop aroma on there that I wasn't expecting. I was expecting this to mainly just be like, just straight up boom, like malt sweetness in your nose. There is that, but there's a little bit of a hop aroma on top as well. Yeah, it's such a mild nose though. But it's kind of like an earthy hop. I smell a little brown sugar to it as well. Yeah, it's a little brown sugary. Maybe a little light cherry on the nose too. Interesting. But yeah, it's not a super robust nose or anything like that. It's pretty pretty low level. All right, so tasting. I'm getting the brown sugar or like caramel -y. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably a little more towards caramel, but it's very light. Mm. Um, malty. There is that hop character on there. Yeah, I could see that. That is like a like that kind of earthy hoppiness. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's very light. Yeah, super light. But I think it's just a nice accent on top of that malty sweetness, which something like this can have a tendency to get too malty sweet. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. Like it's the right amount of kind of malty sweetness. It's in check. And it also keeps it light at the same time. So like there's some nice malty darker flavors there. But it's very light at the same time. I'd actually say that mouthfeel-wise, it seems lighter than the Hellas Lager. Yeah, I think so, too. I agree with that. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It doesn't It doesn't blow me away, away yeah. but I didn't expect it to. I don't love it, but I like it. I like it. I'm going to enjoy finishing that. It's a solid beer. I enjoy that. Okay, so a little more information. Well, a decent more information. So... When all is said and done, this brewery is going to be 3,000 square feet. It's a 15-barrel brew house with four 15-barrel fermenters in it. Uh, they've actually already installed a canning line because they wanted to hit the ground running with that, which I think nowadays, because of the whole COVID times, I think it's kind of essential to do something like yeah. that. Because the whole idea is their, their um, tap room's not open yet. They're actually still actively building the tap room right now. Which, you know, that makes sense because you can't really use it so much because of the COVID situation. So they're mainly just turning out brews already while they're still building out their brewery. Oh, interesting. And then just immediately canning them and people can order online and then show up and pick them up at designated okay. times. So it's a smart way to go because they're still, you know, getting used to their equipment, pumping out some beers, getting some revenue going without being fully open. So, yeah. Hmm. So smart. They know what they're doing as far as a uh, business model. So they're planning to have an IPA and Hellas Lager as their staples. Obviously, we had the Hellas Lager. I don't know if the IPA we're going to have here, which is our next beer, is the one that's going to be their staple or not. But we'll see. Uh, but they're going to make a lot more, including, as you heard in the statement I read, mixed fermentation mm -hmm. beers, which that always excites me because I like funky, I like sour so I'd be interested to find out where they go with that. Um, they are planning on having a barrel aging and saison program complete with fooders and wine barrels to hmm. be used. Now, whenever you say saison, I also perk up because not a lot of breweries doing saisons, and even amongst the ones doing saisons, not a lot of breweries doing great saisons. So I find that cool. Uh, they're going to use food trucks. No big surprise there because pretty much every brewery wants to use, utilize food trucks. And yeah, that's all the information I have for that. Basically, they're still building, you oh, know, they're okay. still not 100% done. So they're still working on stuff, but still putting out beers at the same time. And after we just taste our next one, I'm going to give you the list of all the beers that they had available to purchase on the website when we recorded this. And it's 15 beers. It's a lot. That does feel like a lot for a brewery that's not fully built and just opened in December. Yeah. So it's, that's crazy. So pretty impressed by that. They're really moving. All right. So this next beer is called Rain Nor Shine, and this one is an IPA. And it's 6% alcohol. Okay. Good. So not too crazy. Yeah. It's approachable. I'm assuming this will be a hazy IPA because a lot of their IPAs seemed that they were hazy style when I was looking up what they had in cans. It looks hazy. Okay. Go ahead. Grab it. Let me know what you got. 
Oh, yeah. Definitely hazy. Very yellow with a little orange to it. Mm-hmm. They all have the same amount of carbonation, it seems like. Yeah, it's a pretty decent amount. It's not too much, though, I would say. Ooh. Yeah, that's a robust nose. Yeah, I'm getting that Vaseline. <sighs> I, yeah, I could definitely see that. Definitely. And once I get that, it's kind of it's so off-putting for me. It's it smells milkshakey, doesn't it? Like a like almost a little creamsicle like. I could see that. Um, because it's got kind of this this creaminess in the nose, which I'm assuming they used oats for this, maybe like flaked oats. I'm getting mango. <sighs> yeah, I definitely get that mango. Good point. Yeah, that Vaseline note is giving it a little bit of kind of like this weird funkiness to it. There's a slight pine at play in there. Mm-hmm. It's giving it like a slight spice kick. Yeah. I was going to say pineapple. And orange. Like yeah. juicy orange. It smells really good. I don't really smell much of any bitterness to it, though. But the big test will be, obviously, the, the taste. Because with a lot of these types of beers with hazy IPAs, you get a lot of being promised on the nose, and you get very little pro- actually in the flavor in comparison. So, we'll see. I think it's good. Um, oh. It's pretty flavorful. Um, you get the fruit. I'm not getting the Vaseline-y yeah. fla- flavor profile. You're just on the nose, which is good. Yeah, I don't get that either. It definitely does fall into that category of a lot of these where you know, you have big things promised on the nose, and with the flavor, it's a lot less. But I think the flavor is matching pretty well what the nose was. And you're getting that mango to it. You're getting a little bit of that pine. You're getting that orange juice aspect. There is more of a bitterness, actually, mm-hmm. on the finish than I thought there would be based off the nose. And it does have a little bit of that yeasty character that you get with a lot of hazy IPAs, but it's not too much. It has a nice mouthfeel, nice and really kind of coats your mouth. Yeah, I agree with that. I like that. This reminds me a little bit of like the Dancing Gnome uh, hazies, which are pretty good. So, I just got a hit of grapefruit, by the way, in there as well. A little hit of grapefruit. I like that. Now, I am interested. I want to read a little bit further if it says specifically. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's got Nelson Sauvin hops in it. So, we're supposed to get... New Zealand fruits and rye bread. Oh, that's where that kind of like spicy spice kick. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. New Zealand fruits. Yeah, I don't know. What, what the does hell that mean? That I don't know. Kiwi. What the hell is a New Zealand fruit? I don't know. Or kiwi is just a bird from New Zealand. Where do actual kiwi fruits come from? That is a good question. Someone respond. Hmm. Okay, so I said I would go over the beers that they had available. So, the roundup is this. This kind of makes me a little sad, but I understand it at the same time. Of the 15 beers that were available to be purchased online, there were 15, six were straight-up IPAs, three were double IPAs, and two were pale ales, for a grand total of 11 of the 15 beers being hoppy. Mm. That makes me sad personally, because... I wish there was more of a variety for places like this, but I understand it. People, you know, the market really is demanding hoppy stuff, so I get it. I get it. So here's a rundown of what they had. False Kingdom IPA, Heroes and Ghosts, which is a Northern California IPA, supposedly. I wonder if that means it's kind of more West Coast style IPA. That'd be my guess. Big Blocks, which is a double IPA. Lions on 4th Avenue, double IPA. A Glimmer in the Dark, which is an Imperial Stout with coffee. Hmm. I'd like to try that. Hearts in History, which is a IPA. Dissolve and Disintegrate, double IPA. Toe Motorin, which is a pale ale. Miles to Room. Oh, sorry, Rome. My spelling sometimes. Uh, (laughs) Miles to Rome, IPA. Sifting Through Vanilla, which is an oatmeal stout with vanilla beans and coffee. Mm. That was the most interesting sounding one of what I read. Permanent Visitor IPA, Backwards Walk Pale Ale, Golden Cones IPA, this 340 Lager, which we tried, and Midnight Blue, which is a porter. Which, is that our last one? Yes, it is. Midnight Blue. Good transition. That just happened to be the last one on my list, and that's our last beer to try. Midnight Blue, which is a porter, and it is 7%. Cool. 
pretty excited about this too. Yeah. I hope this is a really good porter because a good porter can be amazing. Mm-hmm. You don't get a lot of straight up port- just porters. Nah, you don't. There you are, ma'am. Thank you. A lot of head to it. A lot of head again. Yep. It's dark. Dark like chocolate milky head. Yeah. Yep, super dark. Looks like you would assume. Yeah, it's got a really dark brown head. Real dark yeah. brown head. Smell? It's so malty. Ooh, that's got a great smell to it, though. I get an ashiness on the nose, but it's not too much. It's mm-hmm. not turning me off. And just a really nice, um, slightly chalky, dark chocolate smell. I'm getting a little caramel. Ooh, yeah, I could see that. A little caramel. Like a, I mean, there's something sweet. There is something sweet, for sure. I agree with that. There is a sweetness to it. It does smell a little creamy, too. Mm-hmm. That smells really good. It smells easy, but it smells really good. And there is a little bit of a bitter kick on the end of each sniff. Oh, that's good. It's so flavorful. Whoa. Oh, man. Yeah, that flavor's robust. That is good. I, I enjoy robust. that. Robust. It is. <laughs> that is a good porter right there. It is really good. Mm. I feel like a lot of porters can be a little, like, on the watery side. This is has a nice mouthfeel. It's very flavorful. Yeah. And I think it's got pretty much exactly what we were smelling, you know, there is that bit of an ashiness to it, but it's not too much. There's a little bit of a chalky, mm-hmm. dark chocolate, that little bit of caramely Caramel. note to it like you were talking about. There is a slight kind of beef jerky slash soy sauce to it. And there is a little bitterness. Mm-hmm. Kind of balances it out. Actually, honestly, it, it finishes with more of a bitterness than I assume there would be from the nose. And there is a sweetness to it. Like we said, we were smelling, but... It's just this this slight hint of a sweetness that that complements everything pretty well. Yeah, it's good. Mm. That is, yeah. I, um, yeah, I dig that. That's a good one. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to have too hard of a time ranking. So, so first of all, before we rank these beers, since we've come to the end, and this has been kind of quick because they're so new, overall thoughts about Old Thunder. Is this a brewery that if, when we go back to Pittsburgh, you want to make sure it's on the list? Uh, I mean, I don't, I can't say yes or no just based on this because I feel like there's so many breweries in Pittsburgh. That's true. And I know you probably want to go back to Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker was really ones. good. Yeah, you loved Hitchhiker. Grist House was a lot of fun too. Um, but uh, I guess it'd probably come down to what's the tap list look yeah. like when we would get there. Okay. So, all right, let's start figuring out what our right ranking is. I think we're going to have the same number one, and I mean, we might have the same overall rating. Okay. Do you want to go? You can go first if you want. So, my number four is going to be the English Ale, Mm -hmm. the Stillage. Okay. My number three is going to be Rain Nor Shine, which is the IPA. My number two is the Midnight Blue Porter. And then my number one is the 340 Lager. Which is the Hellas Lager. Same. Same. Yeah. Yep. Exact same. Um, the only one, the only ones I really had to think hard about were between the Porter and the Hellas Lager. But that Hellas Lager so good. really stands out. Yeah. I mean, the Porter, as far as Porters go, it's really, a really does good stand porter. out. But of this lineup, the Hell Slugger, like, really stands out as being one hell of a beer that I would like to have more of. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I want a case of this beer (laughs) when I have this available. Yeah, we we usually don't have lagers just on hand, unfortunately, and I kind of would like that. And this beer just reminds me of that. Yeah. It's just like, man, we should really have lagers just on hand. So, yeah. Old Thunder. Cool. Hopefully someone or everyone from Old Thunder hears this. Uh, we like what you're doing thus far, yeah. so keep going, you guys. Cool. So hopefully everyone had a good time listening to this. If there are breweries you want us to try and do showcases on, just let us know, BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com. Uh, give us ratings and reviews on whatever podcatcher you're using. If you can do iTunes, that's the most helpful, so that would be great. Also, just word of mouth 
Uh, and our other big thing is the Instagrams. Instagram. Brutal Battle Podcast. Yes, where Rebecca's putting up plenty of uh, photos. But thanks again to Kyle Norman, because we wouldn't be doing this episode without Kyle Norman and his generosity. So thank you very much. Uh, and until next time, keep it brutal. Keep it brutal.